take a little longer than usual because today we're going to go through all the scriptures and Belle, I would like for you to read a verse by verse, I mean line by line. <clears throat> then they germ, germ. This first verse is coming from Matthew 21 verse 4 to 9. Matthew? I mean numbers. I will be coming from number 21 4 to 9 in the New King James Version. Then they journeyed from Mark are by the way of the Red Sea. Now, what what was going on? You know, they had just escaped out of Egypt, and they were going to the Promised Land, and they went from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Now, this is a long way to where they wanted to get. Okay, Bill. To go around the land of Eden. Now, this is really, really a long way. <laughs> and the people were getting frustrated. Uh-huh. Okay. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. Keep going. And the people spoke against Moses, excuse me, against God and against Moses. And, and this is what they said, because, see, they were getting tired. They eat that old stale bread, <laughs> and, and they got tired. This is what they said. Why? Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness. For there is no food and no water, and our soul loath this worthless bread. Okay, now they talking junk. They talking big time junk. Saying that the bread God gave them was nothing. But let me tell you about that bread, angel bread. That bread had all the nutrition that they needed in it. All the minerals, all the proteins, it kept them good and healthy. Now, it didn't taste good. It was very bland. Because they didn't have no sugar and honey to put in it. So, they cursed Moses and God. Why you give us this eat? It's, we eat the same thing every day. I'm tired of this. You got to do better. Read. So the Lord sent fiery serpent among the people, <coughs> and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Why did they die? Because they were complaining about God. They were very dis disgruntled people towards God, who freed them from the Egyptians, who set them on a journey to their own land, who clothed them. Their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out, and he gave them good food. And they murmured. Now, they probably said worse things than what I said. But God, he don't, you know, when you're doing your best for somebody, and they're cussing you out, telling you what you're giving them, ain't no good, but all the time, they, all the while, they're eating. <laughs> well, God can't even put up with that. Okay, read. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Now, they realized once they started dropping dead that they needed to keep their mouth shut. And they repented and asked God and asked Moses for forgiveness. Read. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. Read. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, 
when he look at the bronze serpent, he lives. Now, the bronze serpent, as you know, bronze is for forgiveness. Bronze represents forgiveness. So, you know, this is what was happening. They were laying on the ground, gotten bitten by a serpent, and was dying. And many of them had already died because they believed that, ah, oh, man, we don't need that old serpent. But that serpent represented something. It represented Jesus on the cross. See, when you look to Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Amen. And when their sins are forgiven, you restore it. And so when the people looked at the serpent, they were forgiven and they got up. But for some of them, it was too late. They were too hard-headed. They didn't want to hear what Moses said about the serpent, about the pole, about the bronze statue on it. Look to Jesus and you shall be saved. Trust in Jesus and you shall be saved. Thank Jesus for what he's done, and you should be saved. But they didn't want to do that. They wanted to look the other way with their bad self. And guess what? God gave them what they wanted. Death. Separation. But others, they looked, and they were healed. Amen? Now, Amen. So that's what that serpent, and that's what that story is really about. If a serpent had bitten anyone when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived eternal life. They didn't have eternal life, but that's what it represented. Let's go to the Psalms, and let me read that. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. That's what the people were saying at the... They uh, got up for being bitten. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. There's no end to God's mercy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those that have gotten up. Whom has redeemed, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, the serpent. And gathered out of the land, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. That's that trip they were making. Let's go to verse Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Read. Ephesians. Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. In the New King James Version. And you he made alive who were dead in trespass and sin. Now let me go back up a minute to Psalms. You know what? That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give thanks. To the Lord, for his son who died on Calvary Hill, for your sin. You know, if you take a hog, clean him up, get him spotless, and let him go, where is he going? Back to that mud pit. You know why? Because he's a hog or a pig. That's what they do. See, when you were born, you were born as a sinner. That's all you know. You can't get away from it. Sin. That's why they told uh, Cain, sin is crutching at your door. That's what Cain did, sin. That's what you were, sin. That's all we were. Get my glasses for me. Okay. That's all you were, sinner. And just like a hog, you're going to run back to your sin. If you get cleaned up and don't stay cleaned up, you're going to run right back to your sin. Amen. That's why we have to repent and receive Jesus Christ yes. as our Lord and Savior. And when we do that, we don't have to do nothing else. 
Amen. Because he's done it all. Now, you know, you may go through life <clears throat> saying, well, I was called to be a preacher. But my preaching ain't that good. And I can't keep not sinning. And I can't keep from not doing certain things. What, what's going on? You know, what's my part? Well, what it is, is that Jesus has the whole puzzle. He knows where every piece fits. And he knows where you fit. And if the whole puzzle is finished, except one piece, you. And you won't be fitted into the puzzle until it comes to the part where you're supposed to be placed. And God is going to place you where you need to be. And then you'll be you. You will be able to help complete the puzzle. God hasn't forgot about you. Just because he hasn't used you yet, he hasn't gotten to that part of the puzzle where you're going to be needed. So keep the faith. Just trust God. Keep moving forward. And you'll get in your place. Now let's go to uh, Ephesians. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. That's that little pig. Read. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the son of disobedience. It worked in you. All that time till you got saved. Mm. That spirit of disobedience was working you. I mean, and it was fun. Because it seemed like you had no troubles. Just very little troubles. But, you know, when you got saved, it seemed like trouble was always at the door. The devil trying to get you, trying to upset you. But you know what? That circle that was on that bronze, all you had to do was look to Jesus, and he brought you out. He gave you new life. Read. Three. Three. Among whom? Also, we all once conduct, conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. That's right. Just like the hog, the pig, all them dirty creatures. No matter how you got cleaned up, you kept going back because you didn't have Jesus. Now we have Jesus, we can stay clean. Four. Four. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Now see, when you got saved, you got cleaned up. And when you got cleaned up, you were clean. And you may slip and slide, but God will keep you clean. See? He did it all. He did it all. Everything you need, God took care of. Amen. But he forgave you for your sins. Yes. Read. Five. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. There's that serpent. By grace you have been saved. Six. And no. Okay, go ahead. Six. And raised it up us and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Just think about that. You're sitting up in heavenly places where there is no sin. Right now, you may see yourself sitting here, but your spirit and the real you is with Christ. Waiting. Waiting to be used in a godly, righteous way that God has already ordained. See, you've been ordained. You've been predestined to show up on time. Now, he might show you up a little bit here and a little bit there, but your real true purpose, God is holding you 
for that special call. And guess what? If you keep the faith, if you keep looking across that serpent, looking towards that serpent on that cross, that bronze cross, if you keep looking, for, looking at Jesus Christ, your Savior, you will be used in a mighty, wonderful way. Read. Number seven. That in the age just to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. That's right. Purpose. Read. Eight. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It See. is the gift of God. See, you didn't do nothing. Not of yourself. It was a gift from God that you received. And he's going to let you open that package and use yourself for what you were called for. See, there's nothing more you can do. You didn't do this. You didn't save yourself. A savior did. All we got to do is keep our eyes on him. And we will be used mightily according to his grace, according to his will. And you'll be so happy. See, you've already been predestined to go to heaven. You know, all that he has in his hand, all of you that are in his hand, neither death, hype, hatred, war, meanness, kindness, nothing, no man can pluck you out of God's hand. Well, out of Jesus' hand. Because you're in Jesus' hand. And Jesus' hand is in God's hand. Amen. And God is the most powerful thing, person, entity, God, that has ever been. Because, see, God wasn't created. He just was. Read. Number nine. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's right. You can't say I did this. I saved a hundred people and 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 preached the church in twenty uh, the nations and a hundred nations and got millions of people saved. That's works. That's what you were called to do. You were saved by grace the grace of God, the goodness of God. God gives every man, woman, child the opportunity to be saved. He gave you the opportunity when you got saved. <clears throat> now you're in the hands of God. Read. Number 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. That's right. You were created for works. God created you so he could work you, so he could use you. You're like a hammer, a nail in God's hand that he's going to use one day. Now, he probably might have been using you a long time now. <clears throat> but he has one great purpose for you. Read. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Read on. John, the book of John. 3. Okay, that, that's enough. We're not going to go into John. Okay. So, well, if we went into the book of John, it would talk about a man must be born again. That's like the hog that was born a hog and kept running into the mud. And Jesus got hold of him and cleaned him up. And he desired the mud no more. That's how, that's an example of being born again. New purpose. New outlook on life. You know, and I'm about to sit down. Get a little tired. God wants to use all of us. <clears throat> He's given us all purpose. We may not know our purpose. Well, the majority of us don't know our purpose. 
Elijah didn't know his purpose was to be taken up in a, in a chair. Samson's purpose, was, Samson didn't know his purpose was to knock down that that uh, stadium. Jesus knew his purpose. His purpose was to die on the cross. And when that time came, it wasn't an easy thing. You know what the name of this sermon is? Purpose. Waiting on your purpose to be used. Amen. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you to wait patiently. Keep moving towards Jesus. And that song we read after Numbers, we read a song. That's to remind us to not complain, but to continually praise God and give thanks. Even when things are going not the way we want, we need to give thanks. You know, some people just naturally have to complain. Ugh. Uh, look at that dress he got on. Ugh. Look at his hair. Ugh. Look at that car. But some people say, ooh, that's a nice dress. Ooh, that's a nice hairstyle. Mm, this bread is good. Eating the same bread, seeing the same dress, and seeing the same car. Some people just love to complain. Stay away from those people. You know, misery loves company. Go and be around the people of God. So you can praise. Praise what he's created. Praise him. Praise and give thanks for everything that you have and do. Thank you very much. God bless. Amen. Amen. What a word from God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Call to discipleship. If anybody want to give their heart to Thank mm -hmm. you.